A non-Japanese samurai is not just rare, it's almost mythical. Yet this is the astonishing reality behind the tale of William Adams, an English navigator who transcended cultural and geographical boundaries to become one of the few Westerners ever to wield a samurai sword. But how does a shipwrecked Englishman find his place in this tightly knit society? How does he rise to become a trusted advisor to the Shogun himself? And how did James Clavell transform this remarkable true story into a novel that captivated millions? In James Clavell's Shogun, many characters are inspired by real historical figures from Japan's feudal era, though with some artistic liberties taken for the sake of narrative and drama. Lord Toranaga and Shogun is based on Tokugawa Ieyasu, who unified Japan and established the Tokugawa Shogunate, ruling the country for over 250 years. The novel uses the character of Toranaga to explore the complexities of power, strategy, and diplomacy that Ieyasu mastered to solidify his control over Japan. John Blackthorne, the English navigator who becomes a key player in the political intrigues of feudal Japan, is inspired by William Adams. Adams was an actual English sailor who arrived in Japan and became a confidant and advisor to Tokugawa Ieyasu. Much like Blackthorne, Adams was bestowed great privileges, though he was never allowed to leave Japan. Adams' relationship with Ieyasu helped to establish diplomatic relations between Japan and European countries. Characters like Ishido and others within the Council of Regents, who vie for power and influence in the novel, reflect the real-life political complexities and rivalries among Japan's daimyo, or feudal lords and other power brokers of the time. The narrative of Shogun dramatizes these conflicts, emphasizing the strategic maneuverings that were characteristic of the period. In a period marked by civil war with powerful daimyo battling for supremacy, Japan was on the brink of a new era. It was the year 1600, and the Battle of Sekigahara was about to change the course of Japanese history forever, laying the groundwork for the Tokugawa shogunate's 250-year rule. The Battle of Sekigahara, fought on October 21st, 1600, was not just any skirmish, but a decisive confrontation that reshaped Japan. This clash was the culmination of a prolonged period of civil unrest known as the Sengoku, or Warring States period, marked by the ambitious efforts of Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi to unify Japan. The latter, before his death, had appointed a council of regents to rule on behalf of his young son, Hideyori, inadvertently setting the stage for conflict as Tokugawa Ieyasu, one of these regents, began consolidating power, arousing suspicion and opposition among other daimyo, notably Ishida Mitsunari. The battle was not only the largest of Japan's feudal history, but also its bloodiest, with an estimated 30,000 samurai killed. This pivotal moment solidified the Tokugawa family's rule over Japan, deeply influencing the country's political, social, and military landscape for the next three centuries, effectively ending the era of warring states, and establishing a legacy that would last until the Meiji Restoration in 1868. And it's within this time period that Adams transforms from a shipwrecked foreigner into a revered samurai. Diving into Clavel's research, it's clear he didn't have to stray far from history to find drama. The real intrigue, alliances, and betrayals of feudal Japan provided ample material. Yet it's through the embellishments and fictional characters that Shogun truly comes to life, creating a narrative as rich and complex as the era it depicts. When Adams arrived in Japan in 1600 aboard the Lifta, he was initially met with suspicion and was imprisoned by the ruling daimyo. Japan was a feudal society deeply skeptical of foreigners, and the arrival of a western ship was an event fraught with potential danger and intrigue. Adams' background in shipbuilding, navigation, and astronomy, acquired during his time in the British Navy and subsequent voyages, proved invaluable. Tokugawa Ieyasu, recognizing the strategic and technological advantage Adams could offer, decided to use his expertise to bolster Japan's maritime capabilities. Adams' willingness to learn about and adapt to Japanese customs and language played a crucial role in his acceptance into society. His respect for Japanese ways and his ability to contribute meaningfully to Tokugawa's ambitions facilitated his gradual acceptance and integration. Tokugawa's decision to grant Adams the status of samurai and lands in what is now Yokosuka marks a significant point in Adams' assimilation. 
It was a clear demonstration of his complete integration into Japanese society, not just as a tolerated foreigner, but as a respected member with a place in the social hierarchy. Adams was given a Japanese name, Miura Anjin, and he married a Japanese woman, further cementing his place in Japanese society. Adams was able to communicate effectively through a Portuguese-speaking interpreter, sharing insights into England's desire for trade, its conflicts with Spain and Portugal, and its technical expertise, particularly in shipbuilding and nautical navigation. Adams' expertise was particularly valuable to Ieyasu, who was looking to break the Portuguese monopoly on trade and was wary of the rising influence of Christianity in Japan. With the Jesuits advocating for Adams' execution, Ieyasu's decision to spare him highlighted his interest in leveraging Adams' knowledge for Japan's benefit. Adams' denial of the Jesuits' execution request by Ieyasu was grounded in a principle of fairness, as Adams and his crew had not caused any harm to Japan. This act of mercy by Ieyasu was a turning point, leading to Adams being utilized for his vast nautical knowledge. Adams helped Ieyasu modernize the Japanese Navy by building Western-style ships, a move that was revolutionary for Japan at the time. This collaboration not only impressed Ieyasu, but also established Adams' position within the court. In recognition of his services, Adams was granted a sizable estate, the status of a samurai, and became Ieyasu's advisor on Western affairs and trade, significantly influencing the establishment of trade relations between Japan and European powers. His role extended beyond naval matters to include advising on international relations, particularly in facilitating trade and understanding between Japan and the broader world. James Clavell's transformation of the remarkable true story of William Adams into the captivating novel Shogun is a reflection of his skill as a storyteller and his deep interest in Asian cultures. This fascination likely stemmed from Clavell's own life experiences, particularly his time as a prisoner of war in Changi prison during World War II, which he described as his university rather than his prison. It was here that Clavell learned the art of surviving, an experience that profoundly impacted him and influenced his later works. Clavell's career began in film, where he wrote screenplays before turning to novels. His deep fascination with Asia, coupled with his first-hand experiences of the harsh realities of war and survival, provided a rich backdrop for his storytelling. Shogun reflects not just a historical account, but also Clavell's personal interpretations and reflections on Japanese culture and the clash of Eastern and Western values. In creating Shogun, Clavell drew on historical facts and his imaginative narrative to bring the characters and their world to life, blending real historical events and figures with fictionalized elements. The novel's depiction of feudal Japan, while rich and engaging, sometimes diverges from historical accuracy in its portrayal of Japanese customs and psychology, aiming instead to highlight the contrast between Japanese and Western attitudes towards life, death, sex, and religion. Clavel's intention was not just to tell a story, but to offer a commentary on the Western perspective of Japan, using the novel as a vehicle to explore broader themes of cultural exchange, understanding, and the journey of personal transformation. This approach gave Shogun its unique flavor, making it a novel that not only entertained, but also invited readers to reflect on their own cultural biases and understandings. Ultimately, Shogun became a massive success, captivating millions worldwide and becoming an international bestseller that was adapted into a highly acclaimed television miniseries. Adam's story is exceptional, not only because of his personal achievements, but also due to the broader historical context. The early 17th century was a period of significant transition in Japan, moving from centuries of civil war towards unification under the Tokugawa shogunate. The relative openness to foreign influence that marked Tokugawa Ieyasu's early reign allowed for Adams's unique contributions to be recognized and valued. However, as the Tokugawa era progressed, Japan moved towards a policy of seclusion, making Adams' story a rare instance of Western integration into Japanese society during this period. William Adams lived out the rest of his life in Japan. He was awarded a fiefdom in Hemi, now part of Yokosuka City by Ieyasu, and took a prominent role in Japan's nascent foreign trade and diplomatic relations, especially with the Dutch and the English. Despite his high status and the privileges he enjoyed, Adams was never allowed to return to England, and he remained in Japan until his death. Adams died in Hirado in 1620, 
at the age of 55. He was buried in Nagasaki, where his grave marker may still be seen. His grave site is next to a memorial to St. Francis Xavier. In his will, he left his townhouse in Edo, his fief in Hemi, and 500 British pounds to be divided evenly between his family in England and his family in Japan. He was survived by a Japanese wife and children, in addition to the family he had left behind in England. Adam's grave and a memorial can still be visited in Hirado, Nagasaki Prefecture. If you like this video, hit subscribe and visit the channel to learn more about your favorite movies and shows. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.